the Airbus A350-900 versus 787-10. Before we compare some background context, in 2013, Boeing launched their largest 787 ever, the Dash 10. With huge sales of the A350-900, Boeing wanted to compete but needed a larger 787. They decided to launch a stretch of the Dash 9 and came up with the largest Dash 10, an aircraft perfectly matched in size to A350-900. However, Boeing focused on efficiency and the range took a hit. They aimed to compete with the A350-900 over shorter to medium haul regional routes. Airbus decided to launch their own regional 850 with lower takeoff weight and less thrust to compete directly with the regional Dash 10. So then, the regional 850 or 787 Dash 10, which is better? Before you find out, be sure to follow the official new Airplane Productions Instagram page at Aviation Flat 350 for some great plane spotting clips and photos. A link is in the comments below. Starting with performance, the 787-10 flies 342 passengers to class to 6,345 nautical miles. The 250-ton A350-900 carries 325 passengers to around 6,800 nautical miles. A450-900 takes 11 bulk pallet positions and the 787-10, 13. Cargo 2 is important on these regional white bodies. All in all, 787-10 with slightly more seats, more cargo and more optimised range is better regionally. Engines. The 787-10 is available with GE NX-1B or Rolls-Royce Trent 1000 TEN with up to 76,000 pounds of thrust. A350-900 uses Rolls-Royce Trent XWB D-rated to 75,000 pounds of thrust each. D-rating gives the engine higher lifespan and slightly reduces the fuel burn. Efficiency. While there are no exact figures for these two variants, I can easily give this one to the 787-10. It burns around the same fuel per trip as a smaller Dash 9, which in turn burns 5.63 kg per kilometer. Both have lower trip cost than the A350-900 which burns around 6.03 kg per kilometer. The additional seats on the 787-10 however gives it a larger fuel burn per seat advantage. In fact, it has the lowest cost per seat of any white body going into the future. All in all, I would say the 787-10 is around 5-7% to more efficient per passenger. Cabins. Both manufacturers market the next generation flying experience. 787 uses Boeing Sky interior with higher ceilings, curved bins giving a more spacious view, new mood lighting, quieter cabin with lower cabin altitude of 6,000 feet. It also has unique dimming windows. However, its 9 abreast economy means 17 inch seats in a 9 abreast layout. A350 has 18 inch seats with 9 abreast in the configuration we compare here. It may have smaller windows, but makes up with even higher ceilings, the largest overhead bins, the quietest twin cabin, better IV and faster Wi Fi with underfloor cabling giving more space for passengers' feet.
advantages and disadvantages. Should airlines want to fly long haul, Airbus offers the capability to reverse engineer the A350 regional back into the full long range version by upgrading the engines and increasing takeoff weight, making it a more versatile aircraft. For shorter routes though, it's less efficient as really, it's a de-optimized A350 with less takeoff weight and thrust but the same wings and fuselage built for longer routes. It's a downgraded 8350. 787-10 on the other hand is an upgraded 787-9 optimized from the start for high demand regional routes. It's also got more cargo. For longer routes though, it lacks range and it is the more expensive aircraft with list price of 338.4 million compared to 317.4 for the standard 8350. Orders, the 787-10 has received 203 orders from many Asian airlines flying high demand, shorter route. The regional 8350, no exact figures. But Singapore seems to be publicly the only customer left with 30 of those on order. There we are. The D rated 8350 versus Ultimate 787. With more seats, cargo, and optimized range, the 787 10 is certainly the better regional white body. Thanks for tuning in, and to meet next time. One team, one aviation, one sky ahead.